are Europe's largest mail order company for rock and metal and they asked you to send in some questions to put to Zach Wilde and I'm here to put them to the man himself. This one was sent in from uh, Chiara in London who said, what's the craziest or weirdest thing that's happened to you during Aussie? During Aussie? All these years, I mean, it's definitely, the definitely a lot of stories. Yeah, well, definitely weird would, would be odd when we were all drinking. Actually, it's a sad day when, when you got four guys sitting in the tour bus and we're all, we're all having with a little cup sharing one beer. That was not a very enjoyable experience, but it was a sad day in rock and roll when it comes down to that. But yeah, I mean, Black Label not having any beer on the bus back in the day, that's, that's a pretty sad experience. That's, that's definitely not normal. We got this crazy idea of packing a load of Black Label merch oh, and sending cool. it out to the kids. So we wondered if we could get you to sign, sign the label on there. Yeah, sure. Put a bigger pen there. That's a big chain. Oh, yes. Well, you know, it depends on what side I'm wearing myself to balance out the spine. <laughs> The bar man just said, sweetheart, you need to get a smaller chip. <laughs> <laughs> well, Marcus has written in from Germany and he said, did you teach yourself guitar or did you have a teacher? No, I actually had, uh, I took guitar lessons for like two years with this guy Leroy, right? Which is great because, you know, I mean, they could show you, you know, it's just like somebody showing you how to ride a motorcycle or, yeah. or drive a stick shift or something like that instead of you just trying to figure it out. You know, so, you know, just as long as you, it's like take, getting training wheels, you know yeah. what I mean? I mean, it's just like, eventually you're gonna figure it out, but I mean, if somebody could show it to you, you know, how to throw a curveball or something, it's like, oh, that's how you do it, you know what I mean? Just, just to break it down so it doesn't seem like it's one gigantic mystery, you know what I mean? They're teaching me my scale, my modes, but then, at the same time, he'd show me chords, but then he'd show me how to play, you know, songs by all my favorite bands, you know, whether it's Sabbath, Zeppelin, ACDC, you know, everything like that, so, it was cool. Clements from France wanted to know, have you ever felt the desire to explode your guitar on the ground after a show in true rock and roll style, or is it too precious? Uh, no, I thought I'd launched it before if I was pissed off or something like that. But no, not for the whole... Uh, I've thrown it for different years yeah, just because I'm pissed off, not just because... Uh, not because, you know, to try and emulate Pete Townsend or anything like that. You know, like, because it looks cool or whatever. He really pissed off and smashed him, so, you know, but then I had to get him fixed and everything like that, so... I feel like a jackass after you did it, but uh, yeah, I've done it before though. And Christina in Spain wants to know if you could create a new band using any musician, dead or alive, who would you pick? Oh, I'm in the band I want to be in right now, so uh, I mean, obviously all the, you know, all, all your heroes, you know what I mean? Uh, Randy Rhodes, uh, John Bonham, you know, all those guys, you got Bon Scott, you know what I mean? I mean, thank goodness, you know, a lot of my heroes are still alive, you know what I mean? So, mm. but, uh, but uh, yeah, I guess, you know, that wouldn't be a bad start, those three guys. I fucking hung the poster up in the studio, right? It was like this fucking uh, mural of fucking Alice and Crowley, right? So Alice comes in the studio, I'm fucking dead. Usually he never comes in while I'm tracking the guitars, right? I see when he's doing the vocals. Fucking, <laughs> he goes, sees Jimmy Page, and I think I had a picture of Led Zeppelin up there or whatever, and he, he goes, he's telling me some John Bond stories when him and Bond used to hang out and get fucked up and, and all, just be a bunch of goofballs, right? He sees the picture, and then Jimmy Page, he was talking about Jimmy Page or something like that, and then he goes, fucking Alistair Crowley's up there, and he goes, so, who's the fucking bald-headed cunt on the fucking wall? I go, I'm like cracking up laughing with the fucking engineer, we're both fucking laughing, he goes, what the fuck's so funny? I go, you don't know who the fuck that is. He's just like, who the fuck do I, do I, do I, do I know? Who the fuck is this? I go, oh, you've been singing about him the last 20 some odd fucking years, bro. I go, it's Alistair Crowley. And Alistair goes, oh, is that what he fucking looks like? <laughs> is that what he looks like? You, so from Finland, wants to know, what's the origin of the name Black Label Society? Black Label means supreme. So, uh, you know, like a top shelf type thing, whether it's booze or any, any a car or anything like that, so it's a black label line. But uh, but I'm trying to think, well, originally, you know, because the running joke was we called Pride and Glory, it was like, it was like beer music, and then, you know, because black label's heavier, you know, just sonically and stuff like that, so we just said, well, it's like hard alcohol. And uh, I think when my wife was actually, she just said one day, she said, what's that, because uh, I was going to call it the, uh, well, because right now we have Order of the Black, the new album. 
it was the Black Order, and then uh, she said, well, why don't you call it maybe a society or something like that, because I was thinking about something like that, and then she said, well, why don't you call it a Black Label Society, you know, with, with the Black Label, like Johnny Walker's Black Label or something like that. So I was like, yeah, that sounds cool, you know, the whole booze thing and everything like that, so we just stuck, that's how it ended up being Black Label Society. Asker in Denmark wants to know which song or album made you want to be a rock star? I saw, well probably I saw Elton John playing uh, on Sonny and Cher doing Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds. Uh, I was just like, I thought that was the coolest thing, so, because I meant that I loved Elton John, then uh, still do. I know that Elton John, then, uh, then after that, you know, obviously like my older cousins, they turned me on to the Stones mm. and everything like that. And then, you know, our friends that took, you know, Black Sabbath, that was in what, arts, arts class or something like that. We were making some sculptures and one of my uh, buddies, Tom, had a, he was making a skull with a lightning bolt going through it and said like, uh, actually looks like Scully in Black Label. And he had a skull like that and had a lightning bolt going through it and it said, uh, Black Sabbath 666 or something like that. And I said, oh man, that looks cool. What is that? And he just goes, oh, it's, it's his rock band my brothers listen to. So then uh, that's why I went out and got the records, you know, just because it looked cool, you know what I mean? So for all you kids out there, make sure your band logo looks cool. <laughs> <laughs> and Sabbath did it for me. Describe yourself in three words. Describe myself in three words. Um, left nut, right nut. Penis. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right, okay. How can you pull off such an am uh, amazing pinch harmonics? No, um, no practice, you know what I mean? It's just like anything, you know? Whether it comes down to singing or playing guitar, drums, anything, you, know, you just, you know, I, I think anybody might have a natural talent for, you know, when I talk guitar, some kids were really just naturals at it, mm. you know what I mean? Could, could grasp it really quick with it, but I mean, other, you can see the other kids that practice, and you know, you, you could be naturally gifted, but if you don't practice, man, you know, you definitely got it. Still got a jam, even if you're Ingvay, you still, you know, Ingvay didn't just wake up one day and start playing like that. You know what I mean? So I got one of the, what best guitars and Golden Gods thing. We haven't done a record in four years. So I go like this. I go, you know, what I plan on doing is killing three birds with one stone. Next time, I'm gonna go away for 20 fucking years. <laughs> So therefore, we beat Chinese democracy. Right, yeah. <laughs> and then, you know, <laughs> coming out with the, in, the time in between records. Yeah. <laughs> and then also, I plan on winning a Nobel Peace Prize mm. and a Pulitzer. <laughs> you know, like really up the ante. I already won Lord of the Riff and the yeah. best guitars and Golden yeah. God. Now I'm really going to start attacking some real fucking shit. You yeah. know? <laughs> the more, more time you spend away doing fuck all, yeah. the more they appreciate you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just fucking disappear for a while. Um, question from Italy now. Um, what are your thoughts on the changes in the metal scene? Are there, are, there, are there any bands that really stand out to you? Well, I mean, like Korn, when they, you know, came out and started doing that thing, it's just like, well, you know, I mean, that's what, but that's what makes it exciting, you know, and keeps it fresh, because, I mean, it was the same thing all the time, and, you know. I mean, I, I mean, I still listen to, you know, when I'm home, I, you know, I listen to classic rock all the time, so I still listen to all my staple stuff, whether it's the Stones, that, Sabbath, Bad Company, you know, Leonard Skinner, you know, whatever's on the radio, Elton John, all that stuff, Neil Young and everything like that, but uh, no, I'll still listen to some of the, like, the, the newer stations and everything like that, but uh, I mean, half the time, you know, like people, uh, do you wonder what's going on with the scene and everything like that, you know, with the whole, it's like, you know, I'm so busy bleeding Black Label, you know, I, I'm not worried about what other bands are doing, you know, all, all I care about is what we're doing, mm -hmm. you know what I mean, so, uh, but you know, I mean, I think it's fine, I mean, and like a lot of the younger bands coming up, when we go back to the States, we're going out on tour with Black Label Berserkers. Uh, we're bringing children to blow them out. Also, and Alexi's, you know, like he's the new breed, yeah. of, you know, of, of the, and he's super talented. And like, once again, practices his ass off, and that's why it shows, you know what I mean? So, you know, and then he's just going to inspire other kids, you know, you know, as far as the guitar playing mantle goes, you know, as, as far as kids jamming all the time and stuff like that. The guys in Dragon Force are great. I mean, Sevenfold, really super talented kids, you know, and they practice, you know what I mean? They really work at, they work at what they do, you know what I mean? I mean, I listen to everything, like I said. I listen to Sabbath, I love you too. I listen to, you know, the all the mellow stuff and everything like that, so. Uh, Is there anything embarrassing in your CD? Nah, but I, I, I listen to everything, man, you know what I mean? So, like I said, open minded, you know. Now what's going on everybody, this is Zach Wild from Black Level Society. Just wanted to let you all know. DMP rocks.